night and welcome to a new edition of today's news. We are very pleased to be with you tonight in a very special edition of the program. An edition that concentrates on one of the very important topics that are of great interest to the youth today. A lot of uh, the new adolescents of this new generation are suffering from problems with their weight. A lot of them are actually very concerned about their looks. Some of them are actually um, wa want to uh, imitate great stars and their, uh, the people they are fans of. Uh, but many are having overweight problems and a lot of them actually suffer in the process of getting to that uh, ideal look they think it is. So today we're going to discuss this problem in further detail from a scientific and practical point of view. Stay tuned to learn more about it. more about the problems of obesity and plastic surgery, you are very honored to have with us in the studio tonight two um, of the doctors and professors in this field. We are very happy to have with us Dr. Munir William, Professor of Plastic Surgery, a very warm welcome, and also Dr. Mossad El Ghatwari, Consultant of Endocrinology and Obesity. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thanks. So, as I've introduced um, the uh, topic of uh, tonight's edition, it's actually um, a problem that is um, um, making, um, a, um, I mean, an issue for a lot of youth today, being overweight. Maybe it's interesting at the beginning to have um, an understanding or identification of uh, obesity. What does it mean, Dr. Williams? Obesity means that uh, there is uh, massive production, increased production in number of fat cells in the body in relation to the corresponding age and weight and sex. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to differentiate between obesity and what is known as edema. Edema is just accumulation of fluids inside the body. This edema is not obesity, but mm -hmm. obesity there is either accumulation of fat in the form of increased number of fats or increased size of fats. There is increased number of fats before puberty mostly and there is increased size of fat after puberty mostly. Mm -hmm. So that's actually uh, directly connected with adolescent age, the fa before and after, and in both cases we are having a, a real scientific problem with the, with the body. This is a critical age in order to start to speak about obesity. Mm -hmm. And even in the line of treatment, if there is a plastic line of treatment, surgical plastic line of treatment, uh, uh, age of the patient is very important to decide and determine what to begin and which type of operation to do. Mm -hmm. So actually operating on youth is also um, a solution. It could be. Um, yes, of course. Okay, yes. excellent. Maybe first we need to understand um, what is really the difference between being overweight and being obese. Uh, in fact, uh, to start with, there is, uh, as Dr. Munir said, hypertrophic and hyperplastic obesity. I mean, there is some people they have the same number of fat, but increase in the size of the fat cells. Mm -hmm. Others are born with great number of fat, fat cells, so we have hypertrophic and hyperplastic obesity. Uh, before, we used to define obesity by body mass index, and mm -hmm. uh, till nowadays people are using body mass index. Recently, the WHO uh, found that obesity is related to the circumference of the abdomen, waist circumference. Mm. They decide or they define that for females, if the waist circumference is 80 centimeters, which is normal, or below, from say from 60 to 80, this mm. is the normal. From 80 to 88 centimeters, she is going to be overweight. Above 88 centimeters, she's obese. For males, uh, they found that 92 centimeters is the normal. From 92 to 100, 102 centimeters, this is overweight. Over 102, this is obese. Mm -hmm. so why they choose the waist circumference? What we are afraid, obesity is associated with some risk. They found that 
if you have this body, this Western Conference, you are at risk. That's why they, they, they relate it, obesity to the okay. waist circumference. Uh -huh. Besides what Dr. Maurice said now uh, about fat cells. Okay, so this is the criteria that is um, uh, internationally recognized as to differentiate between the different uh, um, body mass index or actually the, um, waist the waist circumference. 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 I, I'd like to simplify this by saying that we say that the number of fat cells in the adult male is about two times ten to the power nine mm -hmm. and in the adult female is four times ten to the power nine so before puberty this number is fixed so there is increase in number of fat cells still reaching this number the baby is not this number the mm -hmm. baby is small number and target to vision division vision as dr Musa said there is hyperplasia the hyperplasia means increase number of fat cells still reaching this number Two times ten to the power nine in male, mm -hmm. and four times ten to the power and nine it's, it's in normal, female. And it's a normal process to grow. Yes, this is before puberty. Okay. Till adolescence. Mm -hmm. After adolescence, the number is fixed, mm -hmm. but there is hypertrophy. This means there is increase in size of fat cells. So before puberty, there is increase in number of fat cells, what is known as hyperplasia. After puberty, there is increase number of fat. Uh, there is increase in the size of fat Time. cells, mm -hmm. what is known as hypertrophy. This mm -hmm. is number one. Number two, Dr. Mushad uh, said that we are trying to speak about the abdomen for risks for the body, risks from the heart, risks and so on. Mm -hmm. But from our plastic point of view, we are looking to the body as a whole. If there is accumulation of fat in certain special places such as hands, lower abdomen, this is certain type. Mm -hmm. If there is bendulous abdomen as a female, multiple pregnancies or as a male who was athlete and then stopped uh, being uh, a player and return to be have dangerous abdomen, the second type, or there is morbid obesity where there is distribution of fat all over the body. So these are so the three types of obesity. Okay. Okay. Yes. But uh -huh. from the medical point of view, as Dr. Mushad said, he is trying to speak about the abdomen. Okay. For risk from the heart. From blessed mm -hmm. point of view, we are speaking about the body in three certain types. Mm -hmm. You see? Excellent. Yes, of course. So now we've understood uh, the different types of obesity, how you can define yourself, whether you're a normal weight or um, overweight or obese, and um, the um, recognized um, ways of actually uh, determining that. Um, now, uh, of course, um, for our viewers, you can always contact us live with your questions on 2579-4828 and um, uh, throw your questions to the floor to our experts tonight. Any question you have, you can ask us as we've uh, just written on obesity or plastic surgery. I uh, would like to know fast, um, if, why is it especially with youth that they are very vulnerable to being overweight? I know, I know that a lot of people also have certain stages in their life when they are actually uh, prone to gain weight, like what you've said, uh, ladies who've been pregnant and just given birth, they usually have from 10 to 30 kilos um, extra weight. But when it comes to adolescence, that, that's an age also that is very vulnerable to this change um, in the body. <laughs> so why is that? Media. Uh -huh. Media, you know, you know the rule of media, you okay. know, westernization of life, you know. Like before, we used to walk, we used to uh, go up the, Yes, mm -hmm. no, not exercise. I mean, our our, our daily daily activity, normal daily activity. Mm -hmm. We used to walk from here to there. Uh, we used to cook at home, yeah. but nowadays, due to uh, uh, more uh, this fast food chains everywhere, and uh, the rule of media which attracts. If you buy one, you will get one free. So it's, we are the culprit. <laughs> <right? Okay. laughs> so this is this this contributes uh -huh. to uh, the problem or the to increase the magnitude of the problem of obesity in adolescence. Mm -hmm. What, uh, William, what uh -huh. Dr. Mossad said is number one, and this is related to the media. But we have not to forget number one congenital uh, rule or inheritance uh, rule. What is meant by this? We inheritance. Find this, yes, okay. inheritance. We find certain families, there is obesity. Mm -hmm. may, there is maybe obesity in the area of breast. Mm -hmm. There may be obesity in the area of hunch. Mm -hmm. These are passing in families. This is number two. Mm -hmm. Number three, rule of hormones. You don't forget but then, that. But, but in then the this, uh, this inheritance rule, is there any way we can solve it or is it something that you've got to live with? I mean, are we talking about just um, um, obvious um, factors that lead to obesity, or is there a way to handle this issue? We have to handle it, of course. Uh -huh. But there are certain types 
we have to handle by many means, either, either exercise or diet control and so on. Or so this also surgery. can affect uh, um, the um, hereditary uh, problems? Of course. Okay. Number three, don't forget hormonal rule. Mm -hmm. In adolescence, there is uh, hormones, the role of hormones, females and males, and the start uh, certain types of hormones to play inside the body. Mm -hmm. And we find distribution fat starts to uh, be distributed according to this. So uh, there is media, there is inheritance, there is hormonal rule. All these play a role in obesity. Mm -hmm. So actually, there are so many factors uh, that lead to um, this being overweight. Uh, but um, but what about the yeah I mean um, young people today um, um, as you've uh, mentioned are very uh, um, obsessed by of course the media and the ideal persons would you say that this is an issue that uh, actually affects uh, their behavior I mean psychologically speaking um, is this also associate an associated factor or is it only on the scientific and um, normal uh, development of the body. Ah. Let us say uh, now, nowadays our, our um, uh, sons and daughters, mm -hmm. um, they, they have two, two factors pulling them, each one pulling uh, opposite, you know. Mm -hmm. One is uh, fast food and uh, this change of lifestyle, etc., etc. The other one, the media also play good role in showing um, the, the magnitude or the, the risks of obesity. So uh, you, you find in our clinics, we find in our clinics, this adolescent come to, to lose weight or to reduce weight, and uh, they are keeping, trying to reduce weight. Once they reach their target, then they restart again to eat, mm -hmm. so to increase weight again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, it's um, a very difficult issue. To, to decide whether uh, to reduce or to increase. So they are going from here to there. What we do is we try not to press on them with no, don't do, don't do, no. We try to encourage, encourage them to uh, lose weight by temptation, you know. Uh, if you want to, to get soft drink, okay, you can get uh, this can. low calorie. Mm -hmm. Or if you insist on getting the normal, you can get half. Okay. So you give alternatives. Right. So that yes. they, they uh -huh. okay. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 from my own opinion, uh -huh. uh, that by, uh, in order to decrease body weight, we have to follow three lines of treatment. Mm -hmm. First line is li diet control, as Dr. Musa said. Okay. This is first line. But alone, it is not, it is still less. Second line of treatment is exercise. The third line of treatment is a will. There must be a will that obesity and decrease weight is a style and manner of life. Uh -huh. There must be these three lines together. Diet control, exercise as a mode of life, and third one is a will to continue by low weight for life. But it's a manner of uh -huh. life. It's a style of life. But maybe this is actually the, the issue I am I'm talking about. It's, a very, it's very important to balance between all these three issues or factors, and at the same time they are very important. What I'm arguing is maybe because the wrong incentive is given to people. It's the incentive of, be, of, of wanting to look the ideal look of, of a star and not actually having the main aim of being healthy and to keep a good body until the age of 60 maybe. Uh, maybe it's because of this miscommunication um, of the message that makes them, like uh, um, Dr. Mossad says, um, follow the diet until they reach the look they want, and then once again they quickly gain weight. Oh, could it be a problem, or, um, or is it um, maybe, I mean, the wrong will, the wrong incentive, objective? What do you think? Um, let, us, let us say you should give incentive, mm -hmm. but uh, it should not be like a bribe. Okay. Okay. Let us encourage them at the same time. Let us show them the risk and uh, let us them little bit. Fighting. Exactly. That's what I mean. Awareness exactly yeah. of the consequences. Uh -huh. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, recently, to my astonishment, I've read some um, uh, studies. Reference. Yes. Uh -huh. That if you walk four miles a day for one month, as you drop a piece of toast from your diet. <laughs> so, uh, exercise is very important, but also diet regimen is important. 
and it should be some communication between you and and uh, uh, your uh, we can't say patient uh, your customer your client or, or your son your daughter some communications you know you should encourage the, him or her at the same time and should make him frightened frightened from the risks on the other uh, side mm -hmm. okay. uh, i'd like to continue as for exercise uh -huh. what is the role of exercise exercise is very important why number one it makes destruction of fat as a source of energy this is number one by exercise mm -hmm. number two it prevents precipitation of low density triglycerides on walls of heart and lowers of vessels so it prevents cardiac attacks brain attacks hemorrhage and so on mm -hmm. number three exercise makes uh, absorption of fat from muscles less than absorption fat subcutaneous under the skin mm -hmm. so the body becomes more stronger so exercise is very important mm -hmm. but unfortunately once you are a good in dealing with exercise and then stop suddenly uh -huh. there, there they didn't wait a lot yes there is a, a problem huge problem we mm -hmm. find all muscles of the body will drop mm -hmm. there is bendulous abdomen there is lax skin and so on mm -hmm. so exercise is very important to be done and it must be as a manner of life it's a lifestyle mm -hmm. that's indeed the big message that we should all uh, think about being healthy and uh, not being obese or overweight is a lifestyle it's not a matter of um, a certain um, medication or um, a phase of life you go through it's a lifestyle you have to mm -hmm. always follow but if you allow me just to to to, to, to um, uh, whisper into our uh, daughters and sons if their weight is over 90 kg uh, it's not advisable to do exercise while standing mm -hmm. because you are pressing, you are making effort Pressure, on uh, the knees. Okay. Exercise is important, like swimming. Because the body is in a way floating. Right, okay. right, right. Until we pass to say 90 kg or so, we say 90 roughly, mm -hmm. then he can walk and this. And exercise. The best exercise, if you are allowed to do walking, is to walk until warm and sweat, provided you do not walk in the sun. Of course, <laughs> that's another factor. Okay, so that's, that's the stage when you have to stop walking? Yes, until warm and sweat. Until warm and sweat. Sweat. Because I've heard that you actually have to warm up a little bit, and then, and then your body starts to actually uh, oh, burn so calories. You just walk steady, and there is... Um, difference between activity and snake activity uh -huh. you know snake snake walk yes. like this yes snake. so you you walk five minutes and then you stop um, uh, on the, some modes and then you walk and then you stop getting mm -hmm. somebody no that's not this, is, this is snake activity uh -huh. but activity is straight walking okay. until warm and sweat and they found it between 20 and 40 minutes average yeah. that's three times a week five days a week five days a week yes that's the ideal this idea okay dr william has something to add yes uh, i agree with uh, dr mashad for uh, walking mm -hmm. and there is a research said that walking just walking normal walking for continuous for 22 minutes is sufficient mm -hmm. but this is daily for life 22 minutes at least uh, now as for uh, diet control and exercise control if there is no will there is a problem as dr mashad said the patient starts to gain body weight and then loses body weight and then starts again to gain body weight and so on makes like a yo, -yo. Mm -hmm. and then we find problems what are these problems the best problem is what is known as stretch marks of course we find stretch marks and these stretch marks we find it uh, usually in uh, our uh, work these are related to the yo, -yo technique mm -hmm. the patient starts to gain weight and then diet control and so on whether diet control as you or whether he is a good exercise make exercise and then and stop stopped. suddenly uh -huh. usually we find these stretch marks which are very difficult to be treated uh -huh. but actually w that's where um, that's when plastic surgery comes in a lot <laughs> of people actually uh, um, don't have the will to exercise don't have the will to follow a diet strictly uh, with a professional doctor so basically they they think it's the easy way to go 
uh, for plastic surgery because this is well helped with such uh, negative effects with the body like stretch marks they think they're gonna have you know their skin back to normal and stuff is this a correct notion or, or or the plastic surgery should be like a last resort this is not uh, correct mm -hmm. uh, plastic surgery is not the rule it's not, uh, it's not uh, the end result if mm -hmm. the patient still the same style of life we will find another problems other problems which are coming later and he Even after. need for multiple operations and okay. so on and it's not mm, it's good. not good uh -huh. this is incorrect so basically it shouldn't be the way to go just straight for plastic surgery to lose a big amount of uh, weight and then gain them again this is wrong this is wrong uh -huh. uh, plastic surgery plays in many techniques and in many ways so i don't like uh, the patient to enter inside the plastic surgery plastic surgery let be the last if the patient is going on diet control, exercise control, and has a will, he will not in need to be in need for plastic surgery. Excellent. And we yeah. definitely wish that uh, no one would actually um, have to go for that uh, unless it's really required. And we're going to ask our doctor indeed, when is it um, a necessity? We have Abdurrahman online. Hello. Well, hi. How are you doing? I'm uh, fine. Thank you very well, much. Well, I, think I just want to say something. Um, I think keeping exercise always is really important because, I mean, as you know, you would have, have to take uh, all the energy out, you know, instead of, of you know, smoking drugs or doing bad things. You know what I'm talking about? Of course. Yeah, th th that's what I just wanted to tell you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Abu uh, Rahman. Uh, you're welcome, man. Thank Bye. you very much. So, actually, this is a very important point indeed. Um, the fact that youth today uh, tend to. Uh, um, I mean, lack exercise is a lifestyle indeed. And I think with the high tech that they are living with, sitting in front of the computer all the time, having uh, to go through cars and transportation and not walking like uh, the prior generations, I think these are all, all factors that also, um, I mean, add up to this uh, weight problem. Don't you think so? Of course, stress also, if, I can, if you allow me, Dr. Muniz. <laughs> <laughs> you know, also stress. Some people, when they are under stress, they start to eat. Uh -huh. Bench eating, they start to eat. Uh -huh. So also, you know, the, the stressful situations in our life nowadays are more. Unfortunately, um, very true. Also, the absence of um, uh, leadership in, in their life, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in, in their social life, the model, the good model. Mm -hmm. So they tend to go to uh, eating, Here? yes, uh -huh. yes, uh, something like that. Uh -huh. Also, the, this, this, maybe these factors are uh, not evident or clear like uh, Westernization of life, fast food, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But this also plays a role. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why uh, exercise, if even if not going to decrease weight or to help, it, would ha it will help them to stop uh, bad habits like smoking, et cetera, et cetera. Mm, definitely. So mm. this is another positive point mm. to be added to exercise. Uh, our friends uh, spoke about uh, drugs. Uh, as for uh, mode of action of drugs, uh, there are two modes of action. There are first mode is certain types of drugs play exactly on stomach. I mean they prevent the absorption of fat and food from stomach and from GIT. This type of drugs is preferable. Preferable. But yes. Second type of drugs play on the brain, then mm -hmm. on mediators. This is not preferable. Why? Because these are, there are many side effects. Mm -hmm. such as insomnia, nightmares, uh, mm -hmm. loss of weight, tachycardia, cardiac problems, yes. all these are. And unfortunately, these drugs which are playing on brain, they are very expensive and very unpreferable. And they are you sold see? in the market um, yes. even though here, they use side effects Here lies the know. problem, here lies the problem. Uh -huh. But drugs which are playing on the stomach are good for body loss. Mm -hmm. I think we are agreeing. Uh, hundred percent, I agree. Yeah. Uh, even even some that I, some uh, we, we, we we do not like to use the, the, the term of drugs because drugs uh, may be referred to something uh, else. Mm -hmm. uh, some uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, they after they launch all over the world and they make a very big uh, sale. Yeah, yeah, sale. This, no, no, uh -huh. they not sale. They they make a very big launch and say this is this is a promising drug. Okay. Then they found some suicidal tendency uh -huh. as a side effect. Uh -huh. So uh, they start to withdraw again from the market. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, some of these drugs are available OTC. Uh, 
I mean, you, uh, you know, OTC, I mean, if you go to ph the but pharmacy you don't have and to say, have, uh, 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 I want to lose weight, okay, you take this. Yes, uh -huh. uh, you don't have to have a prescription from a doctor. And not only they, they affect, as Dr. Munir said, uh, the pain, etc., insomnia, but some of these drugs are contraindicated with people of hypertension because they tend to increase their blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So we use it in a very, very narrow uh, sector. It's not treatment of obesity. It is for some narrow sectors just to push them, then you stop. But drugs uh, working on GIT, mm -hmm. I mean pharmaceuticals working on, on GIT, are much, much better, less side effect, and uh, they give results better than these drugs or these pharmaceuticals which we use work on the, on the But then I would have the question, where, um, um, since the, it is very well known the good effects of this one and the bad effects of that one, even though it is expensive, as Dr. Uh, William told us, why is it that people tend to go for the expensive and harmful uh, pharmaceutical? Oh, 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 I will tell them about it, it's harmful. <laughs> I mean, if, if uh, Dr. Munir or me uh -huh. did not talk or you, you did not, media uh -huh. did not show, uh, later they would so never know. They, uh, because, you know this but what about the pharmacists? Don't they have uh, the campaigns to actually make uh, them know the difference? But, but, but this drug is approved according you know. There for must be a restriction by Ministry of Health. Uh -huh. There must be a restriction for these drugs. Maybe, and it's, difficult. Be taken, uh, Maybe it is difficult, you know, to me, but, but the problem is to, 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 to launch the drug, you have some phases you, you can go through. If you fulfill these phases, so drug is approved. Mm -hmm. If drug is approved, the Minister of Health cannot, cannot, cannot do anything it's about it. Uh -huh. ah, this is, this is, I mean, if there is no, uh, the media or, um, uh, you know, uh, religious people, uh, mosque and church did not uh, play rule, uh, schools did not play, play rule, uh, then uh, we cannot. I'm not arguing with Dr. Mas'ad. There must be a rule of Ministry of Health for these drugs. These drugs are contraindicated. You see, problems of renal failure, problems of cardiac failure, problems of all these diseases which are present now, all these problems related to misuse of drugs. May, may be difficult. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe difficult. But I guess I, I would agree that um, uh, any, um, anything from the pharmacy should be approved first by a doctor. It should be prescribed. Fast. I, I don't think it's actually um, um, okay to allow anything to be just sold by a pharmacist to somebody who doesn't know, who is not aware of the side effects of any um, drug. I think, I, th I would say it's a problem, it's an issue we have here in Egypt. I mean, when you go abroad, it is very limited, the number of uh, things that you can actually yes. find uh, uh, um, easily available like this. And it's usually on the supermarket track and not in a pharmacy, a professional medical one. We have another caller, hello? Hello, Ms. Maika. Hello, hi, I'm... I'm fine, thanks. Please, can I uh, say what I want? Of course, go ahead. Uh, I think that sugar comes from cake. Cakes are dangerous for health. So we could stop eating cake. Uh, we have to control ourselves. Also, we have to control ourselves. So what do we need uh, from food? When we are eating, we must control ourselves. So normal body, so when we have normal body to control ourselves, from food, uh, we have to drink uh, water and clear our system from fat. Uh, so, uh, we should ask uh, ourselves, uh, do I am uh, uh, overweight? The, uh, and and uh, some people uh, <coughs> in, in the mouth, they have muscles and body and uh, tens and uh, they replace it by fat. Also, uh, we have to ask ourselves, uh, another question, how much food and uh, uh, so, so energy uh, could wind the represent? Okay, th thank you very much, Ayman. These are very uh, good questions to ask indeed. And uh, I guess the, uh, the point you've mentioned about water is indeed very vital. But I would actually address the question to my doctors and professionals here. He started off with a very interesting notion that sugar comes from cake and we shouldn't eat cake. So um, I think it, it, it should, there should be a balance, but we shouldn't totally uh, omit right. sugar from our body. Is that correct? Right, sir? right, right. Nothing forbidden. Uh -huh. Everything is allowed, but with amount, reasonable amount, which is related to activity or job of the person. Mm -hmm. So 
We can say pancake or stock cake. No, you can eat a piece of cake. And the, you know, and diet, no exercise. Diet, <laughs> diet comes from the Latin word which means live happily. Mm. So the, the, if you eat some food, it will, it will uh, make you happy through uh, some centers in the brain. That's, uh, that's why people try, like to eat. Mm -hmm. So we can allow, but according to the, yes, uh -huh. they ask about calories. From 20 to 30 kilocalories per kg body weight, according to his exercise, according to his activity, I mean, if you do mental work, you need more than if you do physical work. Is that true? So yes. that's very interesting for students who are actually studying all the time. Yeah, right. But, right. But what about the fact that they are fitted? No, they should move. I mean, they should provided move. they should move. Okay. <laughs> uh, our friend uh, spoke about water. Uh -huh. Water is very important. Mm -hmm. To start with, there is no calories in water. Mm -hmm. Water calories is zero. But water has to be taken just uh, before meals by 20 minutes. Why? In order to enjoy the abdomen and to make folds for the abdomen for the stomach. So water can be taken before meals by 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. If taken inside the meals, it is appetizer. It makes more eating. So it is contraindicated to be taken within During, meals. Okay. But can be taken after meals. 20 so minutes water, also? No, just after meals. Okay. So can be taken 20 minutes before, before? meals. Or can be taken just after meals. But it's better not to be taken during, during meals uh -huh. uh, for fear to being appetizer. Okay. It increases in eating, it increases in body weight, and so on. So that's a very interesting tip indeed. So water, as much as it is important when it comes to eating, it shouldn't be uh, there during the eating process, before that, 20 minutes before that, or right after you eat. You can always, always drink as much as you want. But again, um, uh, Dr. William, we have a very important question that we've mentioned before. The fact that plastic surgery shouldn't be the easy solution to any overweight problem. Uh, we'd like to know, when is it um, a must to have a surgical intervention? Uh, this is a very good question. To start with, the rule of plastic surgery. Rules of plastic surgery depends what is known as, uh, on what is known as mass number. Mass number is uh, extra ratio of body weight in kilograms divided by the square of length in meter. From our uh, own point of view, from our opinion, we said that if the mass number is from 15 up to 20, 21, this is called mild obesity. Mm -hmm. Mild obesity means there is accumulation of fat in certain areas, such as hunch, lower abdomen, upper <coughs> size from inside or upper size from outside, the rule of surgery here in mild obesity is just only liposuction. Mm -hmm. So the rule of liposuction is for mild obesity. Why? Okay. Because liposuction is an operation for adjusting of body contour. And we're going to go back. Okay. Not for uh, decreasing body weight, okay. but for adjusting body contour. Okay. This is the first one. And I'm sorry, Dr. Bid, because um, they, uh, there is a phone call uh, that's coming from abroad, I think. So uh, we're going to take it and come back to the points uh, with the lipo uh, suction. Uh, hello? Hello? Yes, you're on air. Go ahead with your question. Good, e good evening, Mr. Uh, good evening uh, to you, sir. I'm speaking to you from Ireland. From Thailand? Uh, uh, Ireland, yeah. Uh, Poland. Ireland. Okay, Poland. No, Ireland. Poland, Poland. Poland, okay, welcome. Poland. Welcome, sir. Next, uh, next, yeah, Ireland, next to, next to England. Next to Great Britain. Sure, okay. Next to England. Yeah, I, I, I'm just, I'm, uh, I agree with the doctor. I agree with the doctor that trying to believe him. But, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, do not eat too much. Just eat and exercise sensibly. You must close the TV. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, okay, I guess we've had his uh, point of view. He was actually agreeing uh, with both our doctor here that um, we should eat and exercise sensibly, sensibly right. and that's basically the way to go or to actually lead or live happily as uh, Dr. Ratwari said, uh, this is basically the tip, and we definitely thank you very much for your long-distance call. Uh, so um, back to you, Dr. William has said that uh, th there are uh, levels of obesity, and you were explaining where it is important to go with the mild 
uh, with the uh, liposuction. Okay. Yes, we have suffered by what is known as mild obesity, mm -hmm. and said if there is a max number between 15 and 20, 21, there is only just a rule for liposuction. In second type of obesity, which is known as moderate obesity, the max number is between 21 up to 27. In this type of obesity, there is a surgery, rule of big surgery, mm -hmm. such as pendulous abdomen. In the patient, if the patient has a pendulous abdomen, as a woman has many labors or a person athletes and stop playing and so on, there is a pendulous abdomen. Here, we play plastic surgery in three operations at the same time. The first operation is just liposuction in the anterior abdominal wall. Mm -hmm. Second operation is duplication of recti, means approximation of the muscles of abdominal wall. Mm -hmm. Third operation is excision of excess fat and the skin which is present through a small excision from the lower abdomen. This is the root of plastic surgery in the moderate obesity. Mm -hmm. But in the morbid obesity or horrible obesity or massive obesity, there is another rule of, uh, of plastic surgery. The rule is through application of major operations, such as application of a ring, through a laparoscope or through open surgery. This ring has a valve which is subcutaneous. Once you inject this valve with saline or other fluid, there is restriction of constriction on the stomach and amount of eating is less. But once we remove fluid or saline from this valve which is subcutaneous, the stomach opens and the patient can eat as he likes. What, why would we uh, open up or remove the ring? Uh, this operation, application of ring is under control. If the patient is in need to have a lot for eating, we can uh, remove saline from this valve, which accordingly the ring will start to, to be well, widened. Okay. You see? Uh -huh. But if you are in need to decrease or constrict the stomach, we you go for another? Yes, we, book, we put saline through this valve, which is subcutaneous, which starts to narrowing the wall of the stomach, uh -huh. and the patients cannot eat a lot. Uh, as this is the best all over the world now, okay. is application of the ring. Uh -huh. But there is what is known as gastric bypass, which uh -huh. means that we uh, anastomose the stomach to the large intestine, with or without excision of the small intestine in between. Uh -huh. This operation can be done. <coughs> of course. But there is what is known as gastric threading, which is forbidden all over the world. FDA Food and Drug Explanation in the States started to decrease this operation for their problems. There are many problems which are later be applied to the patient. We're going to learn all about the problems with this issue because, uh, of course, we know that it has been very popular uh, a few years Before, back. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. So we're going to learn all about uh, the problems with um, gastric stripping. But we have a caller. Hello, Mr. Mahmoud. Yes, how are you? Uh, fine, very. Uh, go ahead with your question. Okay, uh, I want to tell uh, something. Okay, um, I'm working in a healthy club, and I'm like, uh, okay, uh, uh, and I'm exercising. Okay, I'm doing exercises. Okay, but uh, also, uh, I have a lot of fat in my stomach. Okay, uh, also I, I'm not, uh, I'm not having uh, water uh, during. Meal. During the meal, after meals, I have my my oats, as the Tremonier told. Okay, but uh, also uh, whatever uh, I have a lot of fat in my uh, stomach. Why? Okay. I don't know why. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Okay. And thanks. our doctors will answer your question in detail. So, uh, uh, the problem here uh, is not uh, related to this time. There is uh, there's some mistake which is uh, taken by his parents when he was a child. Mm -hmm. They gave me him a lot of chocolates, a lot of uh, sugars, and so on. And there is hyperplasia for fats when he was a child. Now he has grown up, and his body starts these fat cells, which are increasing already in number because of bad behavior in that dealing with diet. Now they start to be hypertrophy, which means increase in size. Mm -hmm. So the problem started since childhood, not started now. Okay. So, so he is in need for... Uh, triple, as we said, uh, his diet control, exercise control, and his, there must be a will in order to increase body weight. Otherwise, there is surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, very good. I, th I hope uh, this would answer your question. Dr. Rami, hello? Yeah, hello? Yes, you're on air. Uh, yeah, I just would like to ask the doctor about something. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I am a medical student. I'm a final year medical student, so maybe uh, the talk is uh, maybe about what I have studied, so I think I understand most of the thing, yeah. Great. <laughs> Go ahead. So about uh, obesity, 
doctor was talking now about obesity, but when you study obesity as, uh, as a disease, you, you feel it's like, when we study it, it's, uh, it's like a syndrome. Uh, you feel it's not like a simple disease, it's a syndrome. It's integrated in a lot of diseases in our community, like diabetes and hypertension and all of that stuff. So uh, uh, my question is, is it a result of these diseases or it's like a contributing factor to these diseases? So when there is obesity, you can get easily diabetes, you can get easily hypertension. Especially when you read in, uh, in the books, I mean in the medical books before, you, you can read even uh, in the Islamic books, and Prophet Hadith is not uh, uh, about, uh, about eating a third for your eating, a third for your food, a third for your, uh, for your fluid, and a third for your uh, air. Yeah, you, you see what I mean? So just I'd like to know whether it's like a cause for diseases, I mean obesity, okay. or it's just like a result. Point made. Thank you very much, Dr. Yeah. Rami. <laughs> okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I won't say it's a culprit, huh? Uh huh. Yeah. In, no, if we, each coin has two faces. Of course. One right. face is obesity, the other face is diabetes, hypertension, etc. So w w we can't say uh, obesity is the result yeah. of other diseases. No, obesity is the main, obesity syndrome, as it said, is mm -hmm. right. But it is one of the main reasons for hypertension, diabetes, cardiac problems, even depression. So uh, obesity plays a vital role for all other diseases. So it could yeah. definitely be a cause, like he said. Right. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. The main, a direct, main, main a direct cause. cause. Uh -huh. Main cause. Uh -huh. But I, again, uh, okay, Dr. Williams. I, I'd like to continue and uh, to uh, <coughs> say that obesity is a living disease. In the last century, obesity was a symptom of a disease. For example, there is diabetes, and one of its symptoms is obesity like uh, and other symptoms you see but now in this century obesity is a disease is a syndrome as the person right, said right. Mm -hmm. and from its side effects you can find diabetes there okay. is the reverse mm -hmm. in the past century con we have said that uh, obesity is a syndrome for a main disease mm -hmm. but now it but is there is no correlation between the, uh, mm -hmm. the two we can find that about 25 percent of patients of obesity suffering from diabetes uh -huh. But 75% of patients of diabetes suffering from obesity. So there is interaction between them. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Dr. Rania, hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. <laughs> I want to ask about uh, needling technique for, mo for removal of scars. Of scars? Yes. Okay. So that's a question to Dr. William. Um, are there <laughs> any way to do that? <laughs> Scars is a uh, very high problem for our plastic, for plastic surgery. Uh, scars, there are many types of scars. Uh, the problem reaches and says that if there is hypertrophic scars or what is known as keloid, you see the uh, rule of plastic surgery is restricted at first because uh, once you excise hypertrophic scar or what is known as keloid, it returns back again. But there are many multiple small new techniques for uh, uh, operating for this removing of these scars. Mm. Uh, but uh, still, till now, any scar, if not treated well from the beginning, there is a problem later. Mm -hmm. So the problem starts starting from the first closure of the scar. Excellent. So actually, yeah. this is a call for everyone that once you get this uh, scar, you have to operate on it put the right, um, uh, I don't know... Um, uh, right away, of, of uh, course. Uh -huh, yeah, yes, you have to follow the right rules. Um, a final word, uh, um, Dr. El um, on this very important point that uh, was mentioned by both of you, about the fact that uh, you get those fat cells, you have the start of being obese from the very beginning of the childhood phase. Would like to know when, the, uh, when does a parent have to like um, wake up and see that there is a problem that has to be tackled now before his child becomes an obese person when he grows up. I think from the school age. Mm -hmm. Do you have, do you have a, um, a specific age? Uh, from the school age, when I mean, six. Six, six, yeah, yes, they start to not, and they start to to um, uh, raise the the separates of activity to the child mm -hmm. and they start to um, modify uh, his um, uh, f uh, food habits okay you know if he if he used to this from the school age he will go on mm -hmm. and when he's adolescent 
I'm sure he will not There's be. There's no problem. Uh, even if he, if he, he becomes fat, he will be less fat or mm. less obese than. If he was left without uh, right. observance. Right. Excellent. A final tip, Dr. William. I think that the mother plays an important role in this type of abuse. Mm -hmm. She is uh, responsible for her children, also for her, her uh, wife and so on, mm -hmm. her husband, husband and so on. If she is not uh, ready and have uh, uh, something related to diet control and so on, Knowledge. the problem mm -hmm. starts from the mother. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a health-related issue and as we've um, just learned from our doctors, it's a lifestyle. Diet actually means living happily, so you definitely have to learn how to conduct a happy healthy and a good life and lifestyle as well. We want to thank our guests tonight, Dr. Munir William, Professor of Plastic Surgery. Thank you very much for being with us. And Dr. Musaf El Ghatwari, Consultant of Endocrinology and Obesity. Thank you very much thank for you. your wonderful thank knowledge. You. And we sure hope that you've enjoyed and benefited from this edition of the program. We'll meet you again same time next Wednesday. A very good night.